Hi, I'm Bob Hot Rod Roar from Cleffy. I want to talk about the beautiful manifold selection that we have from Cleffy. Distribution manifolds, we'll call them, because they can be used for um, all the different PEXs on the market. Cleffy isn't in the uh, tubing business, so we make universal manifolds that'll fit any tech, uh, type of PEX that's out there or PEX out PEX. As long as it has the ASTM number on it, we're all set to go. So I'm going to start with what we call our um, high flow manifold. This manifold here I typically use in the commercial application. You can see it has large uh, passageways. It's available in a two to eight port version. It will come with these isolation valves and we put the uh, color coded valves on them so you know which is your supply and return on the end here. It's available with this inch and a quarter um, connection size there. Every manifold that we send out, we pre-test it, we assemble and we pre-test it in the shop before we ship it out to you. So it's going to come uh, mounted on these brackets just like you see it here. There's no assembly required on the job. You take this out of the box, install it, connect your PEX to it, and away you go. On this end, we've got some nice features too. We've got a couple air vents. These are uh, float style air vents, so any air that's in these uh, manifolds as the tubing starts uh, circulating is going to rise up to these high point uh, float vent type manifolds and you can vent it out. Below that, we've got a couple um, flush and purge valves, so you can flush it out the first time, get any dirt and debris out of the PEX tubing, and also if you have to add some fluid to it, if it's a glycol system, for example, you could pump it right into these connections here. So this is our high flow. Now it can be used for a lot of different things. It's not just a radiant manifold. There's a lot of chilled water systems that are coming on the market, chilled beam systems and stuff like that. It's a distribution manifold. It can be used for hot or cold water. <clears throat> high flow is the key to this manifold right here. One last thing on this manifold here, we do have some optional temperature gauges and what's nice about them is we give you wells right in the isolation valves that you just slide those in like that. And now what that's going to do for you, it's going to give you the ability to read the delta T across this manifold. So if you know the temperature going into the supply manifold, if you know the temperature on the return manifold, you can do the calculation and you can see how much um, energy is being put into the um, system just by reading the delta T and knowing the flow rate. So there's our high flow manifold. Moving on to this one, we're going to call this our intermediate manifold. Now, we start to get some more features in this manifold. This is going to be available in a uh, 3 to 13 point uh, port version. Um, same isolation valves on the end of it, the red and the blue to um, tell you which is supply and return. Will be mounted on the uh, brackets like that. But look at what we've done a little bit differently on this manifold when we make the brass here. Is notice how it's been dished out in between all the ports. And what that does that's really nice for you is when you bring your tubing up out of the floor in behind the lower manifold, the tube will nestle in that little notch in there and notice they're offset a little bit from side to side so now the tubings are going to lay through that notch in the, in the back side of that and line up perfectly with the port above it. We take this a step further on this manifold here and we give you the ability to do some balancing. So what you have here on the top, you pop off that white plastic cap and you'll notice under there is an Allen screw. And inside the um, installation manuals, it'll tell you how many half turns on that will give you what flow rate out of that. So you can do some balancing with that, but also you can do some isolation. So if you wanted to shut every branch on this manifold off and then open one at a time to purge, you know, loop by loop by loop, that gives you the ability to do that with that, um, with that Allen screw in there. And then also when you're done purging them, go back and balance every loop so you get the right flow to the, to the loops. Now on the bottom of this manifold, we've got the ability on the return side to put zone valves on it. So you've got a little plastic cap on here that you can actually use to turn it on and off like a thumb screw on there. So now you can isolate the top with the Allen screw. On the bottom, you can isolate it by just turning this cap. But now if you wanted to, you could take that cap right off there and you could put an actuator on there. Now you can start zoning this manifold so every one of these loops could have its own zone control on it. I'm going to show you the zone actuators when we get down to the last manifold. Also on this one, we've got the same air vents on the end here, nice float type air vents. Um, purge valves, pretty much the same functions on the, uh, on the components on the end here. So that's our intermediate valve uh, manifold. This one's available, by the way, with inch and inch and a quarter uh, connections on the end of it, and they'll have the isolation valve size to whatever you order from us, whether it's inch or inch and a quarter. Now the granddaddy of the manifolds down here, I love this manifold, this is what we call our S1 manifold. This has all the bells and whistles, this is a very popular manifold. So now what we give is we take and enhance some of the features that we talked about on the intermediate manifold as far as the balancing. And we've got these little flow setters and the beauty of these is now you just take the cap off and you turn that cap upside down, it's got a little hex in it. And now it turns into a wrench 
and now you can adjust the flow rate going to every one of these branches and it's got a little bead that floats up and down in there and it's going to tell you exactly what the flow rate is going to every one of the branches. So it's a little bit more user friendly as far as dialing in the flow rates where you don't have to count the, the turns like you did on the previous manifold. On the end of this one we've got another accessory that we offer and that's a, a pressure bypass valve. And what that's going to do for you is zones start turning off. That's got a little spring in there. I think it's rated at 3.6 PSI, and that's going to allow the flow to bypass so you don't get too much flow if only one zone is open at a time. It's just going to bypass some of the uh, flow from the supply down to the return. Now on the bottom, you're going to want to uh, start uh, putting some actuators on. I'm going to show you a couple different actuators that we put on here. These are um, electric 24-volt uh, actuators. And they basically, you take this cap off here, and you can screw this actuator on. This is a beautiful actuator. It's got a lot of features that are unique in the industry. And one of them is what we call the twist top. And it's going to do two things for you that's unique. Is Number one, you can manually open this valve. So if you're going to flush this system out for the first time, or if you want to troubleshoot it, make sure you've got your uh, zone purged properly, you can just turn this till it locks it open. Now the first time this valve powers up, it's going to unlock that. So if you go home at the end of the day and say, oh my gosh, I forgot to turn those uh, manual valves back off when I locked them open, don't worry about it. The first time there's a call for heat on that actuator, it's going to power up and it's going to release that. The other thing the twist top's going to do is when this is powered up, it's going to pop the center portion up and you're going to see a green ring around there. And what that's going to do for you, it's going to make it so you can tell which one of these are powered up. So if you're troubleshooting them, you can actually, from across the room, you can look at this manifold and say, okay, zone number one is open, zone number three is open, because it's going to pop up a green indicator, and that's going to save you a lot of time. If you didn't have that, you're going to have to wait and see if you can feel the temperature on that valve or if you can hear some flow through it. So that pop top is a really uh, unique feature to this twist, um, uh, twist flow actuator. We do have one other actuator that's new to us right now, and this one would go on there also. It will pop up to indicate the flow is um, that it's been uh, energized and that there's flow going through it. And this is a low current draw um, actuator. It uses less current than the other ones, so if they're all kicking on at one time, you're not going to um, overamp your transformer. Um, the other thing that's nice about this one, it's hermetically sealed. So let's say you've got a job where your, all your loops are going up instead of down and you want to flip these manifolds up so the piping goes up. What can happen on that, especially with a uh, chilled water system, is you could potentially get a little condensation coming off that pipe, and it's going to run down and it's going to get into the electronics of your valve. With this actuator here, this valve actuator here, being sealed, no problem hanging that below the manifold. Now, if you are going to turn the manifolds, of course, at this end here, you're going to have to flip over your air vents, and this is um, adjustable in the field that you could turn these so that if you flip this upside down that the um, air vents are still facing up. We do have the um, same temperature gauges to go in the supply and return here, just uh, push fit um, gauges to read the temperature on the supply and return. Now let me tell you about the different um, fittings that we have to hook your PEX tubing up to this manifold, to any of these manifolds really. I love this little PEX fitting here. Since we're not in the PEX tubing business, what we wanted to do is build a very universal um, PEX fitting that'll work on anybody's PEXs. It'll work on PEX that's a little bit out of tolerance. Maybe the ID is a little bit out. Maybe the OD is a little out of tolerance. And we do that a couple different ways. For the ID tolerance, we make a, um, an insert fitting there and it's got double O-rings on it. And it's actually got a little taper to it. So when you push it in, it goes in easy at first and then it goes in you can feel it goes in really hard, then you'll feel it snap in there. And what that's going to do, it'll adjust that ID if it's a little out of tolerance, and it also has a double O-ring on it, so you're good to get, uh, get a good seal inside the tube there. On the outside, I like to call this a segmented olive, maybe because it's made in Italy, but um, it's a plastic um, ferrule, let's call it, but it's segmented. You can see all those slots in it. And what that does is if the tubing is a little out of um, round on the outside, maybe it's oval shaped or it's a little uh, smaller OD than what it should be. This olive has a lot of give to it, so it can take up that tolerance. So when you put that on there, you put your nut on there, now you've got a nice tight connection on the inside bore of the tube, and you've got a, um, a compression sleeve on the outside of a segmented olive. On the outside, it'll make up the uh, tolerance on the, um, the OD of the tube, and then that just screws on the bottom of the manifold like that. So that's our PEX fitting. We offer that in um, the 5 16 tube size, which fits some of that micro tube that's used in a lot of the above floor um, retrofit packages. Uh, we've got it available for a 3 8 um, half inch, 5 8 and 3 quarter PEX. Now some people prefer to use the PEXL PEX tubing still. 
And with the Pexel PEX tubing, you're gonna get a much stiffer tube. So we make a different, uh, unique fitting for that also. And what we do differently is we use a brass um, ferrule in there because that's gonna grip into the tube much better than the plastic one. So when that goes on there, it really bites into the tube. And then if I can get this apart without dropping anything, let me show you the difference on the insert part of it also. What we do on the inside of that fitting there is we've uh, we put a little washer in there so the end of that aluminum, when you cut the tube, doesn't touch the brass where you can get some electrolysis. So that's what's going to be a little bit different about the PEX fitting. It's going to have a little different um, um, ferrule compression ring on it and a little different insert fitting. All of our PEX fittings are going to have a O-ring seal, what we call a no seal on it. So we're not dependent on just the taper brass to brass connection when that goes up into the manifold like that. We've got a nice seal, a double seal actually. We've got the brass as well as the, um, the, the O-ring, the nose O-ring at the end of it. So that goes on there. We do make a nice little um, box wrench for tightening those up so you don't have to use a channel locks or a pipe wrench and mark up the brass fitting. So um, one last thing I want to show you, this is a nice uh, a nice feature that we offer as an option also. And these are little temperature indica indicator gauges. So what these would do is, let me put this together and I'll show you how you would use this. Is These are meant to snap right over the outside of PEX like that. They come with a little tube of heat transfer grease that you put on the back side of that to make a good conduction uh, connection to the PEX tube. And now you can read the temperature in individual zones. And I'll tell you a little trick for using those. If you have one of these on the supply and you have one on the return, now you know your delta T. So if you know your delta T, and then you come up here on the top of the manifold, and when the pump's running, you read how many GPMs is going through that loop. So now by knowing the delta T and the GPM, you put that into the BTU formula, and you can tell exactly how, much, how many BTUs, how much heat is be, being put out to every one of these loops on there. It's a great troubleshooting device. It's also nice for um, setting up and balancing systems. And it's great to keep a box of these in your truck. There's so many different things. They'll fit on copper pipe. It's a really handy little, um, inexpensive snap-on uh, thermometer that you can use. So there's basically our three groups of um, Calefi manifolds. Beautiful brass work, nice precision uh, machine work. They all fit, they look good, they work good, and I think you're going to be happy with these manifolds.